So anybody who thinks I really have a complete grasp on what's going on within this apiary, I think I've got you completely fooled. I'm just hanging on by the seat of my pants here, just trying my best to control the growth. Well, first off, I put so much energy in promoting the growth. And then because of that, I put so much energy into controlling that growth. So you never win, right? You want them to grow exponentially, but at the same time, if they do that, they swarm off on you. And then, I mean, you just defeat your purpose. So we work so hard to grow them out. And then we work so hard to harvest that strength and maintain that population. And I kind of think of it, a growing hive, I kind of think of it as a fire, right? So you have this fire and you just keep throwing logs on the fire. Just build it up and build it up. You throw too many logs on the fire at the beginning, this thing just starts, you know, getting out of control. So then you got to go and you got to reach in and you got to grab some of those logs and pull them out. And then every once in a while you throw gas in the fire and the whole thing just goes roof. And then what the hell are you supposed to do? I feel like I've just thrown gas on the fire. Some of my yards are just exploding in growth. Like I've just pulled out two boxes of brood through one of my yards here and I don't know, you know. We walk this fine line, we walk this balance. If they're too small, they don't produce that early crop of honey, you lose your yield. You leave them too strong, they swarm off on you and you lose your yield. What's, and what are we supposed to do? So we're walking that fine line. So an operation that isn't swarming, typically, you know, you're below that, that line. I always figure that you're, if you're walking that line, you got some weak, you got some too strong, you, most of them are right down the center making you the money. The flowers are just about to start to bloom here. We're going to shake this down probably next week. We're going to make our rounds, get that queen in the bottom box, and get more space onto these colonies because all this brood's going to hatch and they're going to require more in one box, like within the week, week and a half. It's just a matter of fact, we need more space. So we got to move ahead. We got to make sure that we have enough room inside these colonies because that's one of the biggest factors whether they're going to swarm or not is if they have enough space within the nest to be able to house themselves enough space to be able to bring in this resource and process it, process it and store it away we got to keep them in that productive mode and if we confine them too much or we this time of year if we you know constrain them too much or they'll just get into a, a swarmy type spirit and bugger off on us so i don't really know how to i don't know it's, I'm just basically going through and I'm using my impression. I'm looking down and say, oh, okay, yeah, those guys look adequate. You know, there's a little bit of empty space on the sides and there's some activity in the center and they're busy working and they're growing, but they don't look overly big. Like I look down and some of these other colonies are just plugged full of bees and honey in the frames and some of them are wall-to-wall -wall brood up here. It's those guys you're thinking, yeah, shit, those guys are going to swarm for sure. So you got to spend a little bit of attention on them. So I just spent the last two weeks poking around the apiary doing that. Uh, the split's done, so I went back through and it just further skimmed, just equalized things out because uh, we worked pretty fast with the split. So I just wanted to make sure that everything is basically the same size. As I'm going through here, just spot checking and I'm, I'm seeing, uh, we did a pretty good job. Things look pretty uniform. It's hard to tell. Um, what's going on in here. It's hard to tell what benefit we provided these colonies until, you know, a few weeks in advance when things kind of uh, balance out as that brood hatches, as that queen progresses and keeps laying and the bees bring in the resource. It's all, what we're seeing here is basically like two or three weeks behind. So we're just going to work through a few here and just take a look. He's probably a little bit shy. So what I'm seeing is one, two, three, four, five empty frames on the outside. Um, 
activity in the center, which is positive, which is really good. Um, not a lot of brood in here. This colony is a little bit bigger, but it's not showing like an abundance of resource inside. So I'm just looking at bees on one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight frames up here. And I'm going to poke down. There isn't any bulging fat frames of honey, so they're not overly full of any type of resource. Empty on the outside. This is a colony that I've taken down in my equalization round. Here's a frame of brood. And I identified them as a little bit stronger that time because I can tell because I dropped them a frame of foundation to work on just to kind of drop a little bit of energy and they are drawing it out quite nice. So there's one frame of brood there. And open brood on that one. Frame of brood there. Guys are maybe a bit big yet. Beautiful frame of brood. So as we go through um, this, when we shake the queen down, when we uh, put the excluders in, I'm going to be working ahead of the shake crew, and I'm going to be basically assessing these colonies as we go, and further skimming. So obviously this queen is absolutely fantastic she is providing a lot of wealth here so I'm going to take a little bit more from them and you know take a frame of brood like this and give it to a colony here maybe that's just Set back just a little bit, give them the empty frame. And that just kind of further evens things out as I fuss my way through the apiary to try to bring the whole apiary to a common strength and just trying to take the edge off the swarm. One of the biggest mistakes I see beekeepers making this time of year is they're so paranoid of colonies that are too big. They're so paranoid of swarming that they, they see a big colony and they just slash it right down. And the problem is by doing that, while well, you're avoiding swarming, of course, but at the same time, you're just completely stripping any possibility of capitalizing on any type of flow out there because you just slash them down so much that they're not productive anymore. So instead you have a whole apiary full of these small hives, maybe lots of them, but they're not producing any, any money. Unless you're in the bee building business. But here we're in the honey producing business. So we got to focus on developing these colonies out to be able to uh, capitalize on that crop out there. And we're walking that line, we're going to lose some to swarms, you know, that's just inevitable. We're going to see some fly away on us. But for the most part, we're going to keep most of them at home and strong enough to be able to bring in that abundance of wealth. And for us as beekeepers, we're going to be able to capitalize that. And that's what keeps us in business. So we can't be afraid of strong colonies. And in a way, it's kind of like cutting your hair. Uh, you start cutting your hair and you cut it too short right off the start and then you gotta wait for it to grow back out, right? But if you just cut a little bit at a time until you are, you know, happy with what you see, uh, you get a better result right off the start. So I get a lot of questions asking what the heck this thing is. This is what I call my shaker tub, and it's just a laundry tub you buy from Walmart. It just happens, I cut the bottom out of it. it. Just happens to be the right dimension to fit a box. 
So when I tap the boxes out, all the bees will go inside this tub. It stands a little bit taller than a typical uh, boxwood, and it just seems like it'd be a really easy target for anybody to, to shake, and they have a hard time missing this. Make sure all the bees get inside the hive. So even when I have a uh, bunch of students or some uh, little more untrained staff shaking bees, they're not shaking the hives, you know, you know, students shake, they shake like this, you know. This just helps provide a little more of a target to keep all the bees that going down to the bottom. Because whatever we're doing today is we're shaking the bees down into the bottom box. Get the queen down to the bottom. We have a pretty nice nectar flow going on today. This is the first that we've had the summer flow, so the honey flow is on. And look at this fresh flow. Beautiful. So we are going to be busy shaking the whole apiary down to the bottom. Uh, that'll happen this week, and as soon as we get these bees down, we are going to put thirds on, and then follow with fourths right away. So this box already has some good weight to it. Quite a few frames of young brood up top. So we're out shaking bees today. That honey flow has hit and has hit hard. We have nectar flowing in and we're not gonna be able to keep up to the flow coming. We gotta get these excluders in and we gotta get boxes on these colonies like right now. It's funny how things can change within days. And something to do with that is one of these yards here that I, uh, this is the pasture that we had sown down to the uh, native wildflowers. Sprinkled some clover out through there. And that clover is just pounding out the nectar right now. These seconds are all practically full. We gotta get thirds and fourths on them. Right now we have canola blooming across the countryside just starting to bloom these colonies are just maturing just perfectly so i think we're going to catch this properly i think we're going to get it right we just got to be a little bit swift here get these excluders in get some more space on these colonies and uh, just capitalize on all this nectar as it comes in So this is what happens when you let a beekeeper sow down a pasture. Look at the nicely scattered clover all the way through here. The bees are just all over it. I don't know if you can see the yard from here. Those boxes are just packed full of clover honey.
We've got a nice nectar flow going on right now. These bees are packing in the honey. As you can see, these frames are getting nice and fat. Just drawing out those frames. So we're adding two boxes on just to hold them at bay. And we'll have to make another round in a week or so just to top up the boomers. So I'm moving hives out this morning and I got caught in this beautiful little rain shower. Hopefully it just stays nice and easy today instead of the severe weather they're talking later on today. We just need just a nice soaking rain today. That'd be great. But uh, I'm moving in these little five frames. Uh, this yard is about, how many's in here? 120 little fives in here right now. And I'm just moving some more in. This is uh, some of the stock that I'm going to use next year to replenish uh, the youth within my operation. I'm doing the same with the sixes. I do some with the fives just because that's the equipment I got. Um, so I'm moving some hives in and the hives I'm moving in were sitting in a where Carrie Queen checked them yesterday and they're sitting in an area with a bit of a flow so they're good. But where I'm moving them into there appears to be no flow going on here. Kind of caught me off guard a little bit. Uh, I just hefted a few of these just to see where they're at and they're light. So I just want to take a peek down just to make sure I didn't starve them out. Cap on this one. There's lots of bees in here. Oh, I'm getting soaked. Ah, uh, I don't have my smoker going. So we'll just. I'll just battle through this. I just want to take a look to see what kind of food stores these girls have. And whether or not I should be patient and just wait for the nectar to come, or if I should send a uh, tank of syrup out, or like a, a um, tote of syrup out. So I don't want to plug them up and then have this nectar flow, especially with this rain, this will spur on something. I, you know, I don't want to plug them out. They have such a little bird nest here. I want to uh, get space on top of them right away. We won't be able to get at them till it will be next week. Whoa, look at this frame of bird. Boy, Carrie's making me good queens this year. They're just mating 100%. They're, she's running about a 94, 92, 94% uh, uh, success on this and it's just Absolutely brilliant. Just one frame of brood. That larvae looks lush. It's kind of hard to see 
But holy shit, there's a whole frame of brood. These guys need boxes right away. And they have syrup. What I'm looking for is syrup around the edges. There's three frames of brood in here. Here's the third one. Third. Oh man. So these guys are gonna emerge right away and then swarm, but we gotta get we have got to get space on them. So we have a little bit of time. Next week, what we're gonna do, I'm gonna send Carrie to this yard. And what the six is we put two boxes over three, but the, the these little five frames we put, uh, we have them share one box. Two of them shares one box over top. I'm just getting soaked here. I gotta hurry up. This frame's full of eggs. And they have drags. This side's packed full of eggs. And they have enough nectar around just to hardly satisfy them. So I'm gonna have to get syrup out to them right now to pack in some more syrup. Here's a frame of foundation. Just, and they're drawing it out now. Foundation's nice to have just to buy me a little bit of time for moments like this. When I get caught off guard or I get behind or there's so much to do, it's kind of hard to keep track of everything sometimes. So these guys on there are on the verge of starvation because they're just packed full of brood. Uh, so I'm going to have to get syrup out to, to these guys right away so they can get syrup into these colonies on the first opportunity. I don't have time to put pails on. I should put pails on these guys. But we're so close to the nectar flow here, I gotta watch. So I'll, what I'll do is I'm gonna put some syrup out into this colony, into this yard, into a tote. And when they get opportunity to fly, they'll go collect it, bring it in, pack up this nest a little bit, and uh, hopefully bulk it out a little bit. And then we'll get boxes onto these guys first thing next week because they are going to need the space. So I can't let them starve out. So I've gone through pretty much the entire apiary just uh, checking uh, the seconds for rogue queen cells. And I've gone through pretty much everything except for um, two yards and I've found it's roughly about half a percent which I found uh, emergency sales in which is really good uh, the crew was pretty easy on the, the Queens this year which is positive And those hives are just left to uh, to requeen themselves with emergency cells. They're kind of left on their own. We've got force on half the apiary right now, and uh, this coming up week, the crew will be putting thirds and fourths on everything else. We have a heavy flow coming in right now. One side of my apiary, uh, we have alfalfa, uh, canola, and bloom, and it's just packing in the nectar. The other side, not so much, but these bees, a bit of a slower flow with the clovers and ditch alfalfa, and just crop peaking. The, uh, the bees are bringing in nectar and they're packing these boxes anyway. So as soon as this crop starts to bloom, it's, uh, these boxes are gonna be full and we're gonna have a hard time keeping up to them with this kind of flow. So this heat really brings on the nectar. It's a lot of fun. We just gotta make sure that we have enough space ahead of them. Oh, oh. Goddamn smoke.
So that's the last of the hives to be moved out. We had just queen checked these yesterday and we're kind of running a little bit tight into the flow here. So these guys are really starting to bulk up. So we got to get boxes on them right now. But this is the last of it. All my hives are out into place now and ready to gather this abundance of wealth that is just about to hit us. So I am absolutely exhausted. Been working myself to exhaustion for the last I don't know how long now. Uh, I've got this apiary set up. It is raring to go. This is all I can do now to manage these hives. So now I just gotta let go of the reins, let go of that leash, and just let these hives go and bring in this massive crop. So I've invited a friend out from Winnipeg who has got two great big mean dogs and they're gonna housekeep the yard and while I take my family hop in the SUV and we're gonna drive towards cottage country and find a cottage on the lakeside and spend a week on the water do a little bit of fishing and while I'm out there on the water I'm gonna have my crew move out all these honey supers and stack boxes on all my hives. I don't have to be around here for that. So what do we have? Four or five thousand boxes I go out this next week. So I'm gonna set the crew out to do that, get everything boxed up. When I get back everything should be in fourths and we should be just topping up into fifths. So uh, been peeking around Miami where we have the fourths on right now and they are right to the top right to the top so they're gonna be putting fifths around Miami up on the escarpment for the rest of my apiary poking around and the flow has just started these uh, a lot of highs are still in seconds I've been putting thirds on quite a few um, so by the time I get back there I'll all be in fourths and I imagine it won't be too long and they will be plugged up too. We're gonna to be short on boxes this year, so we're gonna to have to start cycling through, start up that uh, honey extractor maybe a little bit earlier this year. So we'll see how things pan out. But for now, I am buggering off and leaving one hell of a list for my crew to do. So we just got back from the lake yesterday been away for about a week. Boy, it sure felt good to get away. Recharging batteries. We're on uh, lakefront property, right on the water. So, you know, out of the cottage, down into the water, out fishing, just kind of lounging on the dock. It's just such a nice week. Really needed that. We have canola out in bloom right now. The, uh, up on the escarpment, the crops are not as quite as advanced, so they're just coming into bloom. The clover is in the full bloom right now. Crops are just starting to bloom. Uh, we have fourths on these hives. Anything up around the later part of the apiary is all in fourths. Everything down around Miami where it's been a little more advanced, they're in fifths. I'm going to take a look to see how full they are. And I'm just trying to, I'm just doing a, an apiary round today, just trying to gather some thoughts and just try to put things together so I know where everything's at again so I can plan the week ahead. And looking into uh, these hives, I count these fourths because the brood chamber count is one and then the second, third and fourth. So I just kind of work down the line here and the yard's pretty consistent so I'm pretty happy at the way things are looking. Uh, my objective is to move the whole apiary together as a single unit so then uh, it's a lot easier just to slap down workload. And that's what's going on. So what I have here, what I'm seeing is um, this top box. Bees, whoops. These bees are nicely up into the top box. There's not much stored in the top, but they are up here working them, cleaning them, and storing, you know, starting to deposit nectar. The third box here, 
I don't have my smoker with me, but oh, there's weight in this top box. Holy shit. About this time of year, I count one box filled per week. So I got to estimate when I'm going to get back to this yard to, you know, strip the honey off before I can give them new space. So if they're going to be filling a box a week, that means I have to make sure <clears throat> they have two to three boxes ahead of them. So this one and this one and another one. So I'm going to be sending the crew around to, uh, to all the yards, which I look like to be two and a half, three weeks out. giving them fifths. So this is basically what I'm doing today. I'm just going through and just taking a peek just to see how close the guys got to uh, assessing this fifth box they put on. See there's be yeah these guys are they're filling they're fattening the frames right across the top of the fourth box. So on to the next week will be this box. guys are storing nectar up here already. It's these big ones and they've already started capping across the top of the fourth box here. It's these big hives that are always a little bit of a struggle to keep ahead of. So I always try to manage to the stronger hives because they're the ones that make you the most money. So you give them the most uh, equipment resource. The smaller ones, you know, they, they just pull back into the average. I've been through a few yards now. I started up on the hill and the yards aren't quite ready up there. The boxes are filling quite nice, but uh, the honey's testing 22% and over all the way through. So they've got a ways to go before we can even think about collecting any honey on them. So I'm just making my way around the, uh, the apiary around Miami where it had the earlier start. And this is the first yard I've been in, just to see whereabouts we're at. Hoping to find a little bit drier honey. Um, because they started earlier, maybe they've had more time to cure it. The only thing is with this, uh, with all this moisture we've had, it's just been absolutely ideal. These crops are starting to feel really good. Hot day today, you know, we had an inch last night and it's just like a greenhouse so these crops are just pumping out the nectar i'm going to use a little bit of smoke today just because it's a little bit humid and the bees are a little cranky so my smoker's out so i won't be using smoke should be able to battle through this if they get too grumpy i'll just put my gloves on So they're working up into the top box here. And this frame is absolutely shining. I can, I don't even have to test this. Just, I don't know if I can shine that in the, but that is, it's glistening. This is pretty wet honey up top. As expected, I, you know, these top boxes are always um, not as far as advanced because they're the last ones to fill up. So I don't want to find a top that's plugged right out because uh, then they're, you know, I didn't give them enough space. So I can tell this is probably, uh, I don't know if I can shine that for you. This is probably 22% honey here. I'm just going to take a quick test. I don't gauge whether or not I go on the top box. Last year I poked into the top box and it was 18% I think it was. 
Yeah, that's right in the mark for 22%. So this box, the uh, fourth box here is capped now. Not capped, but the, you can look down the top bars and you see a lot of cappings. So that's a really good sign. That's telling me that these guys are a little more advanced. So I'm seeing like the top third of the frame capped and the inside of the frames where it's not capped it's the honey is absolutely shiny glistening so uh, I'm gonna take a bit from the center here and a little bit of the cappings see what we come up with so that's 19 and a half percent Mm -hmm. Oh, that fresh stuff always gets the back of my throat. That is a heavy box. So this frame's not capped at all. Look at it shine. It's just true. This is wet. I don't even have to test that. That's probably 22% there. This hive's not ready. That box is packed, nice and capped. That top box, you can see it was no use testing that. It was probably that 20-ish, 22% range. Just driving to this yard, I was noticing some of those first canola fields are starting to wane a little bit. We have. Uh, a good staging of canola this year. We have that early stuff. And then we have some later stuff. You see the guys got going in April. And then they got froze out, so some of them had to reseed. And then the majority of guys got going, you know, second, third week in May. And some of them got froze out. Some of them had bugs, bug pressure, had to reseed. Uh, just poor germination because it was dry. So we had a lot of reseeding then. And then we had another wave of reseeding just before the deadline, just because of poor emergent problems. So I have likely, and then it rained after that, really nice. So I have likely four stages of canola, all looking good because of that rain. Um, staging itself quite nicely now throughout the flow. So typically, because that first stuff is starting to end, like that's three weeks of bloom. And the years which, um, Everybody sows at the same time and everybody has a good spring. We have three weeks of bloom to catch a crop and that's practically it. And that's what makes it tough. These years where it's spread out a little bit more, it buys you a little bit more time. It helps us get these hives ready to maturity uh, to be able to collect that crop coming in. But this is one of the reasons why I put so much focus on my spring work. It seems like I'm uh, going through the hives, I'm manipulating, I'm evening them out, I'm splitting them, I'm evening them out, I'm evening them out, I'm dropping boxes on them, I'm sorting, you know. It seems like a lot of work, but when we have our entire year's revenue stream potentially come in three weeks, we got to make for damn sure that these hives are up and ready and they're going to mature when this crop is, you know, providing that bountiful nectar flow. When I first started beekeeping, you know, I mean, I've been in the business for 20 years now, so about let's say 17 or 18 years ago, I remember going to one of the Manitoba Beekeepers Association meetings, sitting, uh, having coffee, and there's an old timer there sitting and just talking bees, just like we always do at these conventions. And he said something I've never forgot. He said, July will make or break a beekeeper. And at that time, I didn't quite understand what he meant. But uh, going through the years, getting some experience, building hives up, collecting crops, you know,
know, chasing that flow. I come to realize exactly what he means. He's, he's talking about you got to get these hives built up and ready for that early flow. July is that early flow. You got to have, you got to collect that crop in July because we don't know what's coming ahead of us in August. We don't typically, we can't bank on a crop in August. It could, you know, it gets hot, it gets dry. We might not even have any crop in August. So we have to make for damn sure we get these bloody highs up and ready and mature in July when this first crop comes. Because in July, this is one of the most predictable times a nectar flow is going to come, is on this first bloom. And all we got to do is wait for the rains. So that crop is coming, wait for the rains. We got to have these hives up and ready to collect that flow. And that's a lesson I learned over the years. And that's what I've been banking all my work on. So that's 20%. Heavy, heavy, heavy. I'm not seeing as many cappings down here. I was hoping the hives would be a little more advanced with, with the honey. This looks pretty wet. That's 21 and a half. So that's too wet as we're going down here. That's going to mix because of the wet honey up top, that's going to mix around that 20-21%. So, so, it looks like we're waiting. So this is one of the reasons why the honey in my hive is still wet. I had three inches of rain this last week. These crops are feeling good and they're just pumping out the nectar. So all I can really do right now is just make sure I'm ahead of the hives with boxes to catch this flow and uh, I just give them time to cure it. So these are the fives that we built right at the uh, beginning of the split. So they are probably some of the most mature queens we have going right now. And they have obviously developed into nice little nests. They'll be yielding, you know, three to four boxes in the first pull here. This is our canola field. It looks absolutely fantastic. So they have no shortage of nectar out there. These guys will be plugged by the time we get back. We have yards over there, and we have yards over there, and we have yards over there, and we have yards over there, yards over there. so we have the area pretty nicely covered. There we go. That's the ticket. Oh yeah.
So we have some good weight in these boxes. Could have probably added another one, but uh, the way it was, these are right full to the top. They're just pulling the cappings down. A lot of honey in these, which is really good. <clears throat> We're testing 17, 18, a few 19, so it should all blend nicely. So the whole idea behind how this board works <clears throat> is the forager comes in and they'll drop their pollen into the closest cell. They'll kick them off themselves. And then they pass the nectar, the payload, to the processor bees within the nest here. And they're waiting for the forager bees in the front. These processor bees are like graduated from nurse bees or whatever. And they're the ones that then take the nectar up into the, uh, the boxes, deposit it in the cells, and then start to cure it, start to dry it down. So within this nest, there's a continuous cycle going from the, the entrance of the hive near the front into the honey boxes. So there's a cycle like this of those processor bees. So by lifting up the honey boxes, which is full of bees processing the honey, and inserting the escape board, we are interrupting the whole process within the colony. So as these processor bees leave the honey boxes and go down to meet the foraging bees, they pass through the escape board and when they come back up they can't get through this board. And here they have two empty boxes of comb waiting to deposit honey. So in a sense they we interrupt the the whole cycle within the colony but we don't interrupt their work whatsoever. And a colony that, you know, is full of honey, scapping the honey, plugging out, you know, it's almost like they get lazy. They won't bring as much in, they're not working as hard. As soon as we put that board in, instantly they have no honey over top of that brood nest and they go in a state of panic, like where the hell is my honey? So when they go into overdrive and start to work, by the time we get back here, I anticipate these two empties at the bottom to be practically full of honey and in two days we're gonna have to add thirds. I plan on adding thirds as we pull as we strip off these top boxes we'll likely give the bigger ones another super. So this is pretty much how the process of these escape boards work and by using these it has allowed us to not only not interrupt the work of the hive the whole process but it has allowed us to be able to manage these heavy boxes without lifting them. Beautiful Sunday afternoon pulling honey in. These bees are just going bonkers. We have canola, we have clover, we have all types of alfalfa wildflowers in the ditches and they are bringing honey in. So these bees have moved out of the top boxes through the escapes and they're just packing the honey in. The two empties we had provided earlier and we are providing a third super for them just to provide them a little bit more space for this incoming nectar. So this is our start. So these frames have been on for Two days. This will be the third day. And they have filled these boxes up already. Right full of nectar. The frame's heavy. So we're putting a third box on every one of them. You can see the bee inflow is quite substantial right now. We've the truck sitting in their way has kind of blocked their flight path, so they're just it's funny they just kind of fly in a holding pattern until we move the trucks out of their way. Not every box, not every hive gets a third. We only give the third super to the hives that need it. These guys are just working up into the second. They're not as big. We got the colonies that 
require that extra box. Holy! So it looks like we're into an excellent start here. Get these boxes back to the honey house and start extraction tomorrow. So I'd say these are about 90-95% cleared. We'll set them down in the hot room, let them clear for a day. Here's a few bees in here. Just little pockets, see? Eh? So the hot room windows will help clear the remainder. Whoop. It's really stuck. It's, it's not coming off, is it? <laughs> these whoop as you can see underneath the escapes the bees with so much nectar coming in there's so many young bees that the bees start drawing the comb up to the screen on the escape which tells you that there's a heavy flow coming in Truck. Look at the bees just pile into these hives. They're coming in so hard that they're landing in the grass. There's one truckload of honey. So I let it sit in here for the day just to let the remainder of the stragglers out. They'll fly to that window. But I'm not seeing too much activity on the top bars here, which is good. These boxes are full, so a pallet of 36, my gross is, is reading 22 and a half, 2200 pounds. So I gotta do the math on that. Each box will you know, tear out at about 25 uh, pounds per box. So I just gotta get my calculator out for that to see what it is per box. And that's the start.
Freshly drawn foundation, this is two days. Taking advantage of the huge flow coming in. So Sandy and I are just out for a walk and I, we just walked by one of my bee yards and I'm just checking to see how full they are. And these are hives that are up on the escarpment so the crop is a little bit later here, about a week later than the crop around Miami. Got them all stacked up. I'm just seeing um, how much behind they are from the, uh, the rest of the apron. And that is right full. And that is right full cappings on the top. Holy shit. So... Okay, I expected these guys to be a little bit further behind. And that is right full. So starting Tuesday, Wednesday, we'll set boards again and we'll just give her and get these guys flipped over. I'm not seeing any swarms in the trees yet. And I'm expecting that to start anytime soon now. But one positive thing I'm seeing is a lot of the bees, like they're working right to the top. They're, they have a field force, they're going, they're focusing on this crop. So that helps me out. That uh, helps keep their attention towards hoarding honey and not towards swarming off. And the longer I can get into the season that way, um, the less swarming pressure I'm going to actually have. So we're, you know, what are we, July 20th or 22nd or something? I forget what it is. Uh, in that range anyways. We're July 22nd now. So we're not too far from August. And I don't typically get swarms in August. So we'll just have to th see how things shake out. All the bees below the screen. Fresh foundation put in two, maybe it's maybe it's been three days ago. I kind of forget. Fully drawn and full of honey. Automatic third box. Bees are going through the escapes quite nicely. Working very well. 
can always tell when there's a good flow going on and there's a good hive because they draw out this wax up to the screen. Boy, that's white. Well, that box is right full, so these hives are doing very well. So we are working as fast as we can here. These little fives, just cranking out the honey. They are doing extremely well this year. These were the first nukes we had made up. And they are demanding space. Pulling down cappings from the top box here. The canola field is done and it looks fantastic. Now, off in the distance we have some late seeded canola where they're just going bonkers over. So we're setting boards in this yard just to uh, try to relieve the congestion so they don't backfill their, well they won't be backfilling their nest because they'll be packed full of brood. But they need space. It is 32 degrees right now. So that's a reason for some of this bearding. Impactful. So we gotta work harder here. Oh, my boxes. I need more boxes. Two fives coexisting. So you can see the, uh, the queen excluder separates the two units so the queens stay in their respective side, but the bees can go up and through and commingle. And they do so and fill up multiple boxes full of honey. So today we battled the heat and we set this yard. And driving out, I'll show you what I found. Kind of got lost in the grass uh, through the busyness of the shuffle as we're picking up the nukes out of this yard. So you can see there's a little bit of long grass here. And this one just got forgot about. So I'm going to load this nuke onto the truck. And I have a spot that uh, in one of my nuke yards, um, as I was going through, I identified a uh, a drone laying nuke. It wasn't, it's kind of interesting when you see these nukes when they produce because they pretty much stovepipe right over top of the nuke. They fill out full of honey and then they share, then they start working back and forth. So this one grouping was heavy honey, heavy honey, then absolutely nothing all the way down. Look down and they're, they're drone layer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull that drone layer out and drop this hive into its place.
money, 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 money. matured just perfectly to catch this blooming canola. We we'll probably have another week, maybe a week and a half in here. We had to reseed this end of the field because of bugs, which matched up brilliantly for my honey production. So this is about up to my chest here. all around so this gives us our main flow and hopefully after this finishes matures finishes its bloom looks like we have some time left on here it's not blasting the top off yet so we have some time which is promising uh, hopefully the clovers the sunflowers the clovers the alfalfas that's all around in the ditches and the field edges hopefully that holds us through the rest of the crop but for now, we just enjoy this brilliant crop of canola and just watch the money flow in. This time of year, we can count two boxes a week. And that's what I'm seeing right now. I'm not sure if it's how long that's gonna hang on. We missed the rains. The flowers are starting to disappear from the fields. The bees will have to fly a little bit more to bring in this nectar. So I think we'll be back down to a box a week, if not half a box a week, right shortly as the flow ends here. But for the time being, it looks like they're filling two boxes. This is two boxes in three or four days. We gave them a third to catch it if it's coming in. So things have been looking pretty consistent in regards to swarming. Anything that's been boxed up here is an obvious hive that's kept, that I've been able to keep in their box and keep them working. Some of these hives uh, that are down to, you know, some of them I take down to just the one super. And then there's some other hives on the other side where I didn't add a third super. Those ones, you know, maybe they're just a little bit smaller. Uh, could be a chance they swarmed on me too, just I didn't see them swarm. Uh, but when I'm seeing the yards, this is what I'm seeing mostly through the apiary. Uh, seeing yards that are, you know, needing that extra space. That's telling me that they've dedicated their workforce to hoarding the honey and no thought towards swarming. The longer I can keep them in this working spirit, the longer I can keep them in the boxes um, and not think about swarming, because I'm, I'm building these massive colonies. These colonies are huge. And it's just a matter of keeping the space ahead of them. And just, you know, I need that inflow of nectar to keep their attention directed towards the fields. And if things line up properly, I can keep them in the boxes, I can bring in this massive crop. Sometimes the timing's off a little bit, sometimes, you know, these dynamics are off a little bit and this massive population that I build actually end up in the trees. So a lot of this is out of my control, but a lot of, the, a lot of what I'm doing here is strictly 
my focused management on you know manipulating this colony to be able to produce these massive populations and have them mature at the same time I anticipate this massive honey crop to be available out there to gather. And I just love it when things come together. All this time and all this effort, it just feels awesome. I'm bringing these boxes in this yard. We have stacks of 36, so the row is 72. I have probably 165, 167 boxes on this load right now from this yard practically full. The top boxes were, you know, two-thirds full, so we're right on our timing there. And I also have these colonies with basically two supers full again. So it appears to me that we are right on our timing and it just feels like I'm grabbing absolutely everything that's out there right now and bringing it in. Well, it's about plus 35 right now and we're pulling honey. And here is the first site of robbing. So these boxes have been left for uh, maybe two days. And the bees were getting up into the honey supers, taking the honey back. There's a few cracks. These uh, five frames aren't as bee tight as some of my, the rest of my equipment. <clears throat> So there's opportunity to get into the boxes and they took back some of the honey stored away in these hives here. So there's still canola out, there's clover out and there's alfalfa. It's just we're so hot and I think we're drying out that uh, the nectar is just running dry. Here I am chipping out the spinner and I'll show you why I have to clean this out every week. So when running properly there's only going to be about an inch layer of wax in here. So we don't want any, any more than that, just adds unnecessary weight. And with the honey coming through warm enough, it should separate uh, pretty quickly as it goes through. And it gives us nice wax shavings in the bottom there. So we run it, you know, that's probably an inch, three quarters of an inch of wax in there. And then the honey layer, but this is the reason why I clean it out all the time. Our canola honey granulates. It's a pain in the ass. It granulates on the side wall, but what it'll do is it'll plug up the baffle here. And then it, it restricts the free flow of honey as the honey comes in and as it separates in its layers, the wax will float on the honey layer and the, the honey will flow down the drum and then through the baffle here and then out the ports. And it's these baffles here, the baffle under here is very narrow. And when there's a, a crust of granulated honey plugging up some of that baffle, it restricts the free flow of, of honey and it just kind of slows the whole process down, if not jamming things right up. So that is why I clean this thing out every week. Setting boards in the sixes. These girls are going absolute bonkers. All the way here, I'm looking at canola fields that have finished and not being able to find any type of nectar source. If they are bringing something in, it must be on the other side of the apiary. They're right packed and these lids are shaking nectar. So that's a good thing. So the boxes are full. I'm taping them up like Fort Knox just in case I'm wrong about the inflow of nectar. But uh, we look at the bees. There's pollen coming in. So there's a field somewhere here that I don't see or some kind of source of nectar that I don't see that is coming in. And we are making sure we're going to take it all. This field is absolutely buzzing with my bees. Our sunflower crop has 
just started to bloom. With a little bit of rain, it's kicking out, must be kicking out some nectar because these bees are all over this field. So I have at least, I have one, two, three, four, four yards within a mile, mile and a half of this field. And we have, there's about 180 acres of sunflowers here. And I don't know if this camera picks up the sound. But it sounds like a bee yard in here. There's just a, just a low hum all the way across. So this field of ours is uh, within a mile, yeah, this is within a mile, mile and a half of the honey house yard. So I'm hoping that this, this field will hold the bees off from robbing uh, for another couple of weeks anyways. And it'll keep the pressure off the honey house for a little while yet. It's kind of nice to keep the pressure off the honey house as long as we can throughout into August. And it just makes our work much more pleasant. So it's Wednesday morning and we're putting in boards, uh, just preparing these yards to collect the honey on Thursday, Friday. There's honey in these boxes, which is extremely positive. Uh, but I've noticed the honey flow has completely run out. I uh, put some boxes on these yards a week ago, uh, just added fourths, just to try to catch any of the last flow if there was any coming in. And those boxes were cleaned up, but there's no nectar put into them. So the honey flow has run out. This yard here is beside a sunflower field and beside a mass of seed uh, alfalfa field. And there's nothing coming off them, just some pollen probably off the sunflower. There's wildflower and clover in the ditches and such. There's still pollen coming into these colonies, but basically very little nectar. Uh, this yard is 10 miles east of my home yard and I think they got less rain than we did back home. Uh, and I think this area is just dried right out. Because back home, around the honey house, I have one, two, three, three yards close enough to the honey house that they should be robbing if they were, like they are in these boxes right now. We've been here for about 35 minutes and they have found the equipment and I'd call this, uh, we're, going, we're moving into that hot, heavy robbing situation. So it started. Honey flow is pretty much done, unless we get a little bit more rain just to perk up the, the stragglers of the flowers. But basically it, we've got our crop locked in, they're in the boxes and now it's just a matter of stripping off the boxes and extracting it, but also we got to start shifting our mindset towards winter nest preparation, especially if the honey flows run out, we have to make sure these colonies don't starve out. Um, there is a bit of nectar coming in, so I'm not afraid of them starving out yet. I'll be able to tell on Thursday when we come and collect these boxes how much nectar is being stored in that fresh box we're putting down right now. And if that's dry, then we've got to get quick with the syrup, which is coming next week. But also we got to start thinking about bulking these colonies up, bulking their brood nest, fattening these winter bees up. We've got to start putting supplement down. And we'll probably start that this weekend. So it's a busy time ahead. More work ahead of us right now because of the, the robbing. This just adds another layer of work and unpleasantness, <clears throat> but something we'll get through and I'll show you what we're doing to help manage a robbing issue. So as we lift the boxes and we put the escapes in, we are actually removing these honey boxes from the actual function of the colony. So as the bees clear from the honey boxes down below to the brood nest, below the escape, they can't defend these honey boxes up top anymore. So we have to ensure that these bees can't get back in to rub this, this honey out, which we want to collect as our harvest. And what we need is bee tight equipment, which I don't have. So we either tape up the corners or we cover them with these cases. These cases actually takes us five minutes at the end of the yard to put on and they absolutely relieve any type of robbing issue to the top of the boxes here. They look kind of goofy 
not that I really give a damn, but uh, they're very effective. Slip it over and I don't even have to think about these yards robbing their boxes out till I come back. Take them off to strip these boxes back onto the truck. So this is what I do to manage my robbing issue. We can come into this yard and within about 30-35 minutes we can have this yard stripped off and away before these bees actually find us as we take the honey away. So it's completely relieved us of the robbing situation, which we all hate, especially me, I hate robbing with a passion. So I do the extra steps like this uh, just to manage that issue and to avoid robbing completely. So I just pulled into this yard this morning just to square out the load and I'm not here five minutes and they found me. <clears throat> These bees are heavy robbing. Not to worry because uh, I'm going to be out of here within about two minutes anyway. But I want to show you the important thing that I'm seeing. Pollen's still coming in. Not just a little bit of it, but a lot of it too. So as we move into dearth right now, uh, we are seeing heavy robbing, which is not good, but it doesn't matter because our crop's locked in already. So we still have pollen coming into the hives, which is extremely positive because we need this pollen to build to have these colonies advance. Just because they're in a bit of a dearth, you know, they're in a very hoardy spirit right now. I can supplement that with sugars and they do very well on that but I can't supplement that pollen and without that pollen then these colonies just basically shut right down. So with this dryness it's dried up all the nectar flow so these hives are in uh, extreme robbing spirit. It's also an advanced our grain harvest. The crop is coming mature super early now so the guys are actually, actually out in the field right there taking the crop and it's coming off all right it's coming off dry just like my honey so anyways I gotta quit videotaping this and get back and out of here strip off the yard before the bees get a chance to get at us but you know it's never easy here's a hive that the Queen obviously had got up into the honey boxes so she slipped through the excluder I guess and she's made her nest up in the honey boxes and because of that uh, these bees won't cycle down into that bottom they all stick to the top box. So now I gotta go sort through these four boxes, shake the bees down, find the queen, sort the bird down the bottom. It's gonna waste a lot of time and I imagine we are gonna be caught in a cloud of bees because of that. I just want to do a food assessment on these nukes. Uh, we've put these escape boards in which has instantly removed the food that was stored above from the bottom chambers. As soon as these boards go in it completely removes these top boxes from the function of the colony below. 
So I have to make for damn sure that they have some food going on below here. Um, and I'm fearing that they probably don't because these guys I'm anticipating they're gonna have like five to six frames of brood. Um, I'm gonna see if there's any pollen in here and I want to check to see if there's any type of sugars. Uh, we have syrup set out in the yard here and they're just starting to find it so um, it won't take long before we have some inflow but I just want to see what's going on in the bottom chamber here. And these bees are already moving down. This escape board works extremely fast. As you can see, the bees are coming through the cones, just streaming through the cones. Even as I hold it here, they're moving through the cones. And it, they kind of, as they migrate down to the bottom chamber, they just kind of go through the, uh, they come down, they hit the screen, and they just kind of circle until they fall into this channel. And then they instantly almost go into those cones. It's almost like a magnet for them really neat watching them do that. So it doesn't take a lot of time for them to migrate down. Um, I don't have my smoker with me, so we're just going to dig down. They're probably a little bit edgy, but uh, we'll just battle through it. I'm looking at a frame rimmed with pollen. Absolutely no food. Brood. This side's full of pollen. Open cells. They're not using the cells. This outside frame should have honey in it. I'm not seeing even a stitch of honey in there, which got me concerned. Here's a solid frame of brood. Brood on this side. Let me get my sun angle here. Completely laid out with eggs. Another good frame of brood, younger brood surrounding that with pollen. I'm seeing pollen stores this year, which is mm -hmm. extremely exciting. This is open brood. I'm not seeing any type of sugar stores. This is one of the disadvantages of these uh, skateboards is you put them in and it doesn't provide you access to even put pails on the yard until you get back. So you, I got open feet out there. Here's a solid frame of brood. Holy crap. These guys have a lot of brood inside going on down here. Here's a frame of open brood. As on this side, this is young open brood. So now if I don't get sugar into this colony, they're going to cannibalize that open brood. Pulling the last frame here is chock full of brood. I haven't found the queen. There's so many bees in here. And this side's full of brood. Not a stitch of sugar to be found. So that is extremely concerning. These guys are dangerously light. 
they haven't reacted to the removal of the honey boxes yet. So, I'm just going to have to trust that the bees will do what they do best and find that syrup and bring it back within hours. The yard, this yard of 60 nukes, which equivalent to about 40. Uh, and the workforce, you look at all the bees here. I'm going to have to come back here probably tomorrow to make sure they're sucking back this syrup. So I'm back in this yard today just to see if they were able to bring in some food reserves and they are definitely busy putting this uh, worker population to work. I set out three totes over here just to drop some syrup into them and we'll just take a look to see. Half done already. Busy, busy, busy. Good. So I'm just going to open up a colony here just to see uh, how much they have stored inside. Just to help me sleep at night a little bit, knowing that they have some reserves on hand. I just want to check it out. packed in here, look at that, right full of bees. So, ah, don't have my, forgot my smoker again. But I'm just gonna dig down, I just wanna take a look on the outside of the nest just to see if they're able to store any syrup. And I'm looking down at this nest and it looks a lot, looks wet, which is positive. Yesterday I was looking at a dry nest and there is syrup stored in this frame. It's stored in this frame. So these guys are good. I just want to pull a frame here with open brood just to make sure they hadn't already started cannibalizing their brood. Because these guys had no food on hand. They would have sat all night without any food except for what was in their stomachs. frame of capped brood and they're filling all the space here with neck with not nectar with syrup Nice frame of brood. Lots of syrup on hand now. Where did I find that open brood before? There's eggs and open brood there. But I'm. Oh, this next frame is what I'm looking for. Yeah. Yesterday I pulled a frame that was right full of open brood. Which is this one? It's still there and it looks lush. So crisis averted. As this side, this is really young brood. It looks fantastic. So what's going on now is these bees are going out and they're gathering the syrup and they're basically just bringing it in and dropping it in any cell they can find. 
So I'm finding syrup randomly placed all through the nest. This is the only place they can store it, because this is the only place that I have for them now. Uh, as things go, they'll take that syrup and they'll, you know, they'll put it where they want it as they build this nest and they, as they consume all these resources to, you know, carry forward and develop out what's needed ahead of them. So it's good to see the honey in here. I'm just going to relax a little bit about them starving and I don't want to drop too much syrup on them yet because I don't want them to start back filling this nest out. I just want to keep syrup on hand, keep food on hand for them. That is that. So as you can kind of see, these nukes really require, the way I run them here, they really re require more attention than as if we're running them in single boxes. We are running them, and you know, you can also make that argument with single boxes as compared to doubles. We are running these units uh, with less resource on hand. So as we go through with our uh, beekeeping operations, as we take their food away, we got to make sure these guys don't starve out. We got to make sure these guys have the resource on hand to be able to carry on their development and and move on. So, in a double hive, you'll notice that there's a lot of honey in there, and there's going to be more pollen in there, and maybe a little more space. So, you're allowed more flexibility within your management. You can almost just do your work and forget about them. Um, with the single box management, uh, that brood is more dominant, the queen's forced to use more space, she's pushed out a little bit more, so there'd be less room for honey, um, and there'd be, there's pollen in there, but maybe there'd be less pollen in there too, that's arguable, but there'd be less place for honey in there, so you have to be a little bit quicker on your resources. Uh, by managing in those situations, we are basically maximizing the amount of honey we're pulling from these hives, uh, which is our objective this is our business we make honey so we maximize the amount of honey we get on them in that case we have and in this case we're forcing that queen to use the entire box here full of brood practically the entire box so we get, she has pollen on hand she has very little spot to put any type of honey resource we are basically telling her to put it up and when she puts it up here we take it away so then they're left with nothing so we have to make sure that these units don't starve out. So we have to be Johnny in the spot and we have to be absolutely aware of what's going on, all the conditions around us and when we're pulling honey off these uh, singles and especially these nukes. If there is a heavy flow going on right now and we stripped off these boxes and to give them back any space, they would plug out that brood nest. Just kind of like what they're doing right now with the syrup. They're just packing her full full of syrup. They'd be doing the same thing with nectar and they'd just plug themselves out. So. We have to watch what's going on. On um, this situation has happened now, they were in starvation mode. They had absolutely no sugar on hand. On the reverse, I've had years where we pull all the boxes, all of a sudden a flow starts up, and they completely plug themselves out. Absolutely no space for that queen to uh, make, continue on that winter yeah. nest. So anyways, you just gotta be aware of what's going on. With every advantage, there's disadvantages. We just had to learn how to manage them. But if you understand what's going on and you are not afraid to work a little bit and you're Johnny on the spot, these nukes, the way we manage these nukes, are an extremely effective way of rearing queens, um, of producing a honey crop to boot, and just managing the mass of workload around making up nukes just by being able to manage all the surplus honey up top, strip them off, throw some feet in the yard and away you go. So anyways, that's just a little bit of rambling about what's going on here. Uh, 
Didn't sleep very well last night because my babies are starving, but obviously everything's hunky-dory. Uh, those bees would have had full stomach fulls of, uh, of, you know, honey and nectar. So they would have been able to sustain the hive for, for obviously overnight. Now this herb's in them. Looks like we're going to get a bit of rain. Might hold them inside these boxes for a day, day or two. And I don't want to worry about it because they have syrup stored inside their hives. Quite an exciting thing. I love it. So we're making use of a nice rainy day to extract the last bit of honey. I haven't been in the honey house for, I haven't put a frame into the extractor, it seems like it's been five years now. So this is kind of a nice day, a bit of a change of pace, and uh, just bringing back a little bit of that practical feeling. Uh, we're seeing a little bit of granulation. You probably have another day, day and a half to put through, so we're gonna try to press that through today and get this honey out of the comb before it hardens up on us. We're seeing a lot of sunflower, uh, second cut alfalfa, so the, uh, the honey's a little bit darker, but we're also seeing um, some of that late flow canola, which is starting to set up on us. So we're gonna try to press it through the next couple days, day and a half. It's gonna give us a bit of a break from feeding and get this honey out of the comb and finish up this job already. Today, it's only Carrie and I. So it's going to keep us hopping, but we'll see how many we can put through today. 